Listen for the tone. My name's Dirty Red. Everybody know me as Dirty Red, so you know my government name don't need to be in the mix. But uh, uh, I'm from San Antonio, east side of San Antonio, and I've been rapping and all that ever since I was a little boy, since middle school. But mm. I got off to um, like producing and stuff around the late 90s. But I never got yeah. to do nothing with my production until around the 2000s, you know. Mm. Everybody yeah. always on me to rap. Come through, sing a hook, do a verse or something. And that's just, that's what got me to where I needed to be. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was up, man. Who was some of your first, uh, who's some of your inspirations to rap, man? What made you uh, decide to pick up the pen? Well, you mean like inspirations as far as in the city? Both, man. City and okay. uh, just okay, like industry, just growing up. Okay, now if I if I say the people that inspire me in the industry, yeah, you might not believe it, but Ali Shaheed Muhammad from a tribe called Quest. Mm. And that was yeah. my favorite growing up was a, was a tribe called Quest. Their first album, Low End Theory. I, mm -hmm. I remember I can I got it memorized. Well, not the first <laughs> album, not the second album. Yeah. But um as far as in the industry, the producers, you know, as a child, that was, that, that, that was my inspiration. But now as yeah. an adult, it's people like Timberland, Dre, uh, mm. more, more of the producers, DJ Quick. A lot of people don't know that boy DJ Quick's back here. He's a master yeah. producer. Bro. Yeah, he, man. Yeah, meaning that he don't, he mix master, and, and he produce, mix master, engineer all his stuff by himself. He don't need nobody. Dre does that. You know, yeah, one stop shop. Yeah, yeah. So, and you know, I aspire to do that too. But I mean, I got a little hearing loss, so that's just kind of hard for me. It's kind of I'm kind of handicapped with that. But I make yeah. it happen. So I still make that's it happen. That's what's up, man. Do you just prefer rapping or or producing more, man? Producing. Producing. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up, man. And who did you just like learning, just picking it up, like? Just being around in the studio, or you somebody just like sit you down and like, hey, kind of show you some stuff in the studio. Oh, it was a it was a guy named Ali Lampkin. Ali. Mm. Yeah. Ali. I uh, when I was young, this was in the 80s, 80, 89, 90. I met him. He lived in the sticks on Lincolnshire Street. I used to go to his house and I was amazed that he had a, a, a keyboard and a little task cam, and he would make beats right there in my face. To me, he was famous just seeing him do that. Yeah. And he asked me to rap, and I would come down, I would rap, write raps all day for him. And I'm, I'm, I'm like 14, 13, 14. He's like 16 years old. And um, yeah. we go to record, and after school, we go there every day. And then it got to the point where I'm like, well, hey, man, show me how to make a beat. And he wouldn't let me, he wouldn't show me after a while. You know, it <laughs> took me a while to finally get him to show me. But um, he, he, he allowed me to. I felt like I could do it because I watched him do it for so many years, and I'm like, man, I could do it. But he he was yeah. on to letting people test his equipment. So, uh -huh. but I get that I get that credit to him, man. He the one that inspired me to make beats and do all that stuff. Yeah, that's what's up, man. And what time period that like '80s, late '80s, early '90s? '89, '90, '91, around okay. that time. Yeah. Was that around the time like Fat Tim and everybody kind yeah, of okay. jumping but, off? That's what it was, with Fat Tim. I was going to Fat Tim house to get my hair cut. And uh, it was Ali and a bunch of dudes all in Tim's front yard. And they were letting Tim hear their newest music. And yeah. I knew Big Tim rap. But when I got there, it was a bunch of people. They was playing music for Big Tim, letting Tim, you know, give him his stamp of approval to them to their music. And Ali was one of them. And he just mm. stood up to me, you know. And I just yeah. Checking him out, and then he told me he lived around the corner. So I followed him. As soon as I got my hat cut, I followed him home. He didn't. He didn't run me off. He didn't. He just said, well, "Yeah, yeah." So I went over there and started kicking it with him, and he never sent me home. And that's all that you know. That's pretty much where it came from. Yeah. That's love. That's what's up, man. That's love, man. Uh, what was like the hip hop scene down here in San Antonio, man? I already see we had like break dancers and the fly riders, raw dogs, and stuff like that. Do you remember that? Yeah, like <laughs> riders. Yeah, I remember being young. I had some, my uh -huh. cousin, we, my uh, my cousin Rocco, now 
They used to okay. Work. We'd be out there in the Victoria Courts, and they would go downtown to the Hemisphere Park and break dance for money. Uh -huh. stuff. Yeah, I remember that. And um, then I remember being out in the sticks with Ali and them, and then um, Ali and them would dance. I forget the name of that group Ali had, but uh, but they would dance and rap and stuff. Uh, Bone Shakers? Bone, was bone Shakers, something like that, right? Oh, no, they ain't. It's Born, Born something. Born Fresh. Hmm. Okay. Born Fred, that's Big Tim now. Born Fred. Big okay. Tim. Of course, he wasn't dancing. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was Born Fresh. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And then, you know, as a kid, I was, I was, I was kind of sheltered as a child, meaning like, you know, I didn't go outside. But when we moved over to that area by the sticks, uh, that's when okay. I started getting out the house and I would meet Big Tim and Ali. Luckily, I met the right people. I could have met a bunch of gang members and got stupid at a young age. Well, yeah. And you know, they I felt like I was somebody around them, you know, because to me, yeah. they were, you know, I don't, I, you know, I thought they were famous, you know, but that's what's up. How was it growing up on the east side during that like time period, man? Because that's a whew, that's a legendary time period on that yeah. side of town, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, to, to, to go from seeing uh, being in middle school with your friends and then high school and then you had their funerals man you don't know how many names how many are part are, are obituaries my name is on as a Paul yeah. Bearer, inactive Paul Bearer throughout these years you know it's 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 crazy that we grew up in that 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 time period we grew up in you know I could have been one of them as many times I've been out in the mix and um stuff was happening I've been yeah. shot uh mm. people around me getting shot at you know, I'm yeah. pretty much shot right in my face. Bullets not meant for me. You know. Yeah. You know, it's like God had His hands on me this whole time, man. For some reason, He didn't allow too much of nothing. Too much, nothing I couldn't carry. He yeah, put, He didn't put too much on you, man. He didn't put too much on me, man. And, uh, yeah. That, that might have been uh Grandma prayers, man. From uh, you know, the song, man, and <laughs> pain. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that album, man, the first time I actually heard you was off that album, Commerce Street Records, uh, Running Blind. Uh, you was yeah, two songs on there, if I'm mistaken. Uh, you and your nom with Mr. Hoshea, Free Mr. Hoshea, and, and rest in peace to uh, King uh, 13. King 13. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, what was it like making that album and how it feel to be a part of that, like, classic album? Well, I'm going to honestly tell you the truth. You know, I'll be talking to Sean now, Sean Tompkins. Yeah. Video. He talk all the time here from Washington doing this thing, and we got so we cooking up something too. I'll talk to you about that later, okay? That later, but I'm gonna tell you about that song. Uh, uh, -huh. uh I'm gonna tell you about the uh, the pain, have mercy on me, Jesus. I know this police woman, okay? <laughs> the producer was Rissay. I don't know what him and Sean hooked up that day, but they said, Yeah, get dirty red to the studio. So I got over there, I'm hungry, I'm ready to rap. I'm like, Okay, what are we gonna do? And Rissay, yeah. He said, uh, hey, man, I'm just going to put this beat on right here, and I just want you to rap over just this simple drum track. It was just like a drum track with a little bass line. So mm. I put it on, and I'm listening to it, and I'm like, well, I don't hear no melody. I, it wasn't no break. It was just a long beat, and I, just drums. So I yeah. rap that song to that. I rap right there on that. No hook. Just right drums. There. Yeah, just drums, because if you, if, you, if you listen to the song, you don't hear me on the hook. I'm nowhere on that hook. You're right. Yeah, yeah. that's Rissay singing the hook. That's Rissay. Yeah, Rissay bad. Rissay did all that. Yeah, yeah. But I was so mad at him when I heard it. I said, no. Like, why did you <laughs> Yeah, like, but I had to understand it. You know, sometimes what I like, it's not always about pleasing me. You know, I've, I've learned yeah. that about creating music. Sometimes you could, I, like, a lot of times I've done stuff and I'm like, ah, it's not good enough. And people yeah. come along. Be like man that's perfect man give it to me i'll buy it you know so i had to learn that but at that time at that time that was my first experience with that and i yeah. didn't like i did not like that at all let me say just took and made a whole song around my lyrics you know yeah i just it bothered me but man uh -huh. where i went people always tell me man that's the, man that's my favorite people know that so niggas they used to shoot at me <laughs> the song, man they like the song man Maybe that's somebody yeah. asked from getting popped a few times, man. I don't know. But 
<laughs> whatever the case was, people liked that song, man. And it, and it, you know, I yeah. even like it after a while, even though I sit there and look like, hold on, man, that's not my complete work. That's not me. But I, I, I learned to appreciate it from a different aspect, you know. Yeah, and that's very Produce now, being that I produce now, sometimes uh -huh. uh, I have to do the same thing with some of the guys that come through here. They want to do songs, and they they have their idea of what they think, and I have to play the game. We say play it on me. Yeah, you have to do that sometimes, man, in order to get what you need, man. Because sometimes, you know, it only take one person to screw a light bulb in. You know. Yeah, you're right about that, man. Yeah. I got to interject real quick, Dave, man, man. Talk more. Just talk just a little bit more about Rissé, man, the, the the master, the the okay, the almighty guru. I don't know where Rissé at. I would love to see him. I ain't seen him. I haven't even bothered to look him up, man. But Rissé, that boy was bad. Uh, he was mixing and mastering on the 24-track something in that trailer over there off mm. of Pin Across from Cable Elementary School. I heard about that trailer. Purple yeah, Room. Back, he gonna have that. He gonna have that. Um, Evan and Williams drink. <laughs> See, he yeah, and he knew how to get you to record good. He knew that once you come over there to give you a sip, because some people come down and be nervous, because he was very professional. Right. You know, he was. Man, the stuff Jazzy Faye. When y'all see Jazzy Faye doing, man, Rese was doing that before I, we even heard of a Jazzy Faye. Rese was yeah, doing that. I believe. You know? I already Rese know. Didn't get Jazzy Faye. That's what who Rese was. You know. Right. Man, Rese, that boy is bad, man. And he yeah, was. And he, and I like about him because he was doing everything from he, he did everything himself with the production, mixing and mastering. He was one of my inspirations too. Quiet as kept. I mean, I, I don't. I can't believe yeah. I just didn't say him. Because going to his house and seeing him do all of this with 24 tracks. Right. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, golly, this dude is telling me. It's just in this small room. And then when you take a CD that you take some of his music and you put it in a uh you put it in your tape deck and you ride out and you listen to it, it sounds so big and majestic. You would right. never think it came a little bit of a room in that trailer, you know. Yeah, that he did yeah, that. Man. You know? so, Shout out to the save, man. You yeah, shout out to man, shout out to all of y'all, man, that was on that album. Y'all created a whole sound that was just uniquely San Antonio, man, yeah. that was just like, man, you put it in your car and just ride. So you still can do it today. It's timeless, man. Uh, yeah. Being that you rap and produce, is there a difference between, like, in your creative process and to going into making a beat and writing a rhyme, or you just kind of attack you, like, the same way? Oh no! Now I just don't. I have no direct. I don't know where I'm going. This is my thing. Like what I tell people, I don't know where I. When I produce, I don't know what what angle I'm. I don't go into it saying I'm gonna make an R and B track. Or yeah. Make a hip track. I don't do that. I just sit down and I just start doing stuff, pressing buttons, and I use the process of elimination. Whatever don't sound right, I take it out. Whatever sounds good, I leave it. And at the end of the at the end of the track, it might be an R and B track, it might be a hip hop track. I don't know. Uh, it just grew. Yeah, I just yeah, I just make music, man, and whatever it turns out to be. That's what I'm actually doing right now. When y'all come, you know, I'm sitting. Okay. What I do. Yeah, that's yeah, what's up. Let me press play real quick. Let me see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me hear something, man. Hey, it's coming that fire. <laughs> Okay, I can't listen to you too much. That ain't finished. That's my boy, Dude Dirty. Yeah, can't give him too too much, man. They got to come to the show, dude. They got to come to the show uh, Friday, man, for all that, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those who haven't seen you perform, man, what can they expect to see Friday, man? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to loosen up with a little Evan and Williams drink. I'm going to get a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can be. Yeah, and then um, I don't know. I like I like to interact with the audience. I like to talk to people out there, and just really just be myself. You know, I haven't been doing a lot of performance because, as you you know, as everybody know, I've been in and out of yeah, jail. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of them years I missed. Um, that shit kind of makes a difference. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like when you get out there and you try to represent yourself, people will look at you like, "Who is you?" You know? Who, yeah. Who the hell are you? Dirty. I ain't heard of, heard of no dirt. Some people have heard of me, some not. 
Yeah. And it's got to now where like I'm really not big on trying. I'm not trying to be an artist. You know, I'm 46 years old, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I'm, it's because Pee Wee, because Lewis Cassian wants me to do this. You can call him Pee Wee, man. I still got it on 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 the inside of me, but yeah. at the same time, I remember when I was young, when I was 21 years old, when I was 19, when I was 17, I, what what I needed back then was an yeah. older dude or someone that would that could have given me a platform. And this is what I'm trying to provide right here is a platform. It's somebody out there that needs me, you know, yeah. that needs yeah. me. If not my production, just the, you know, the fact that I could, that I got the studio time, I can record to mix. You don't like my production, bring somebody else's production over here and I get it recorded for you. You want to That's sit down thing, and man. make some, yeah. And I want to help somebody or somebody's some yeah. that, that want to you know, record some youngsters. Yeah. You know, what advice you got for what advice you got for the youngsters, man? What advice you have for youngsters trying to you know come up in, in this rap game in San Antonio, man? My advice is that well, it's a different era than when I came up. When we came up, we had to press up our tapes, our CDs, and stuff. Now you can attack the world from your computer. You know, you set your distro kid, your tune core, or your United Masters count up, get all your ducks in a row. And um, but the main thing is this: record mm -hmm. every day if you could possibly do it every day, and don't feel like you have to impress nobody. Don't be a tough guy. Yeah. Do your do it. it I mean, if you rap, if 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 um if you rapping that gangster shit, and you living it, man, I'm gonna pray for you, bro. Because a lot of you yeah. see what's happening. All these pop smokes and mo threes and king bonds. You see what's happening, man. Yeah. It's a lot of that. I ain't seen rappers dying at, at this rate. They done. They, they ain't killing themselves on pills. They getting killed. This is crazy. Yeah, it is, man. It's sad, man. Tupac, Tupac Big, so huge. Tupac Big and Easy E. That was huge. Yeah, it was, this man. This is a common thing. Yeah, well, yeah. you just kind of become known to a rapper's dying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, we're gonna we gonna ask you a quick five question. Captain. Go ahead. Okay. Kind of broke. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now what is it? Now, I so said we're going to ask you a quick five questions, man. Give us a quick answer. Uh, Gangster Knights or Chuck Taylors? Chuck Taylors. Okay. Digital or analog recording? Say what now? Digital or analog? Mm. I'm gonna have to go with analog. Yeah, I was gonna say that, man. I love analog, I'm, man. I'm, I'm, yeah. That was a hard one. Because this digital yeah. just makes it so much easier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh man, I'm gonna take this one back to the nineties, man. Uh man, we can only go to one club. We're going to either Chocolate City or the North Pole. Chocolate City. Okay. Chocolate <laughs> City. Quick. Yeah, you, yeah, you said that one quick, man. Chocolate City was just the spot back then. I was too young to go, man, but I used to hear it all the time. Like, ooh, man, I wish I can go. <laughs> Those were dumping, though, but I just had some good situations. Some good shit happened to me for me at Chocolate City. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> uh, Man, also sticking with the 90s, we got one event to go to. Are we going to the Taste of New Orleans or are we going to the Martin Luther King March? Taste of New Orleans. Okay. Ooh, the, Taste of Taste New Orleans. Yeah, the, the females used to be anything, out. Anything to get up off that east side. Taste of New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I feel yeah. you, man. And last but not least, man, this is Heart of Texas. You going with 80 foes or a blaze? Hold on, say that again. You going with you riding 80 foes? 80 foes swingers, or are you going with choppers? You riding blaze? Uh 80 foes. 80 foes? 80 foes. Ooh, I feel you, man. I feel you. Well, dirty day. Uh Red Man ain't gonna hold you up too much long, man. Uh 
if anybody trying to get with, up with you, man, for some beats or verse or anything, let them know how they can get up with you on social media or whatever. Man, anybody that needs some help with their with their music, feel free to tap in. Y'all know where I'm at. Y'all see me on social media all the time, and I do this from the heart. I don't do this because I'm trying to get some notoriety or fame or nothing. I do this from the heart. I do this for free. You know what I'm saying? So get at me. Let's get down. Let's get together and let's, you know, get situated. And then um, we'll figure something out from there. But for the most part, Friday, I'm going to come. I'm going to do my best shit. I'm going to put on a good show for y'all. And um, and I would like to thank my partner, Lil Sin, one more time. Pee Wee, I'd like to thank you, bro, for doing this for me, bro. And you got this stuff set up real nice, man. So I commend you for that, homie. Listen for the tone.